In today's video, we're going to learn how to journalize the first semi-annual interest payment for a bond where there was either a discount or a premium on the bond issuance. I did a few prior videos in this series, starting with the one in which we discussed how to calculate whether there was a discount or a premium and how to calculate that amount. If you missed that video, that might be a good starting spot. I've linked it up here for you. In this, uh, we've got two scenarios. We've got scenario one and scenario two. And we previously determined that in scenario one, there was a discount of $5,700. And in scenario two, we have a premium of $4,000. So we need to then take a look. We had done another video in which we recorded the transactions for the issuance of those bonds. If you want to see that video, I've linked it up here for your viewing pleasure. But today, we're going to talk about how to journalize the semi-annual semi -annual interest payments for you. And we'll show you just how easy it is to do that. But first, I want to say something wonderful is going to happen for you very soon. Be on the lookout for it. And now, back to the video. In this scenario one, we have issued bonds. That means we sold them, our, the company we're accounting for sold them, and they're $100,000 for par value. This is also known as face value. The annual contract rate, also known as the coupon rate, is 7%, and they were issued on January 1 of 2020X for $9,300. $94,000. $300. So you can see there is a discount here of $5,700. Let's take a look at what that looks like with T charts. I like using T charts to keep track of this. So this is going to be our scenario one, and that'll be for our scenario two. This is all going to be on the liability side of the balance sheet. So we have the bonds payable. And we're always going to record it for the full par value, that full face value. And because it's a payable, it is a liability, it's going to be on the credit side. So we're going to have a credit of $100,000. That's the full value. Then as since we have a discount of $5,700, we have to record that in a separate account. And that is down here. I'm just going to put it below it because usually you record them next to each other or one right after the other. So we're going to call that discount on bond issuance. And that is the $5,000. $700, but is it a debit or credit? Well, we can look at how we had handled it here for scenario one. It was a debit. It was a debit to discount on bond issuance. And so that's the $5,700 debited to this account. This is a contra liability account. In other words, it offsets the liability over here. So we've got a liability of credit of $100,000 and a debit for the, the contra liability account of discount on bond issuance of $5,700. What is known as the carrying cost or the book value, that's two different terms for the same thing. We would take the $100,000 and subtract out the $5,700, and that would give us a carrying cost. And in this case, at the beginning, it would, of course, equal the amount that we sold the bonds for, the $94,300. So that's how it looks like for our T accounts. Now, we're going to need to, first of all, record the interest payment. 
So we have an interest payment to be made on this bond. Let's go ahead and get a separate, we'll go ahead and do it below here. We're going to do interest. And this is for scenario one. Our interest is going to be, first of all, starting out the interest payment that will actually be made, the contract payment or the coupon payment, is going to be the $100,000 times the contract rate, which is 7%. So that, of course, and I can use my financial calculator here, just so we don't get anything mixed up, 100,000 times, and I can use uh, the percentage button, 7%, equals $7,000. So our contracted payment over the year is $7,000. However, because it is paid semi-annually, semi-annually means twice a year, we have to divide this by two. So that means each six months, there's a check that goes out for $3,500 for that $100,000 of bonds. So that's the total amount that's in the aggregate. The $3,500 is in the aggregate because that is half of the $7,000. And we make $3,500 payment twice a year, that will equal the $7,000. So one payment, let's say if it's on a calendar year, would go out on June 30th, and the second payment would go out on December 31st of that same year. So let's record that interest expense. And for a scenario one, we're going to say this payment is made on 630. And we know that we're reducing our cash because we're paying it out. So we know we're going to credit cash. I always like to think about cash first. It makes it easier to know which way to go. And we're going to credit cash for $3,500. And what will our debit be? Our debit is going to be for interest expense. For that very same amount. And that would be recording the interest payment. And you would continue on each interest payment the same way. Now, if the bond was sold at par value, in other words, if it had been sold exactly at its face value of $100,000, then we would be done. Our, we would be nothing else to do. However, this one was sold with a discount. And it asks us to journalize the first semi-annual interest payment we just did and the amortization of the discount using the straight line method. Straight line method, just like in the straight line method for or depreciation would be that each payment period or each period we're looking at, we're going to have an equal amount amortized. And amortized, just think of it as chipping it away. You're chipping away at something. In this case, is a straight line method. Each payment period, you're chipping away the same amount because it's a straight line. And that should be the easiest method. How much do we have to amortize? Well, let's look at our discount on bond bond issuance. We have $5,700 is our starting balance, and we're going to amortize that. So we look at that, we have $5,700, and how many years are there? Well, we know it's three years according to the information we're given. So we're going to divide that by three. So I'm going to use my financial calculator again. And if you don't have a good financial calculator, I've got a link to some good ones down below. $5,700 and I divide by three and that gives me $1,900. So that would be our annual amortization, but we have semi-annual payments. So this is divided into two. So I'm going to divide this amount by two and that gives me an amortization of $950. So with that first payment, I'm going to amortize it. In other words, I'm going to put this on the credit side for $950. Likewise, let's go ahead and record the journal entry. 
I'm going to get a new sheet here. And this is going to be scenario one. And again, that same date, 630, because this is just a separate entry from that original payment of the interest. And we're going to amortize by $950. And that is a credit. And so we're going to credit, and we always start with debit, so I'm going to skip a line, and we're going to credit the discount on bonds payable. And we know that's going to be for the $950. Now, we have a second entry here, and it must match, so we know it's going to be, again, $950. And what is the account? Well, think about it. What are we doing? This $5,700 is actually additional interest we're paying because we didn't get a full $100,000 when we sold the bond. We got only $94,300 when we sold the bond. So when we pay back the 100000 that's going to be the additional interest expense on top of the semi-annual payments. So this is actually going to be debited to interest expense, thus increasing the company's interest expense throughout the year. So that is how you handle the discount on bonds payable. Let's look at the premium situation. I don't know about you, but I like premium situations. If you like premium situations, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and I'll know that you like premium just like I do. All right, we're looking at scenario two and likewise we determined that there's a premium of $4,000 because the bonds were sold at a, an amount higher than the face value. We need to take care of, first of all, the interest payment and in this case, it's going to be the $100,000 times the same contract rate of 7%, and we're going to divide it by 2. So in interest scenario 2, we're going to have the same situation. It's going to be paid on that same date, 630, and we're going to have interest expense. of 3,500 and we're going to have cash going out of 3,500. So I took care of the straightforward interest payment. Now, as it says, we need to amortize that, amort that premium using this, again, the straight line method and it's going to be look very similar to what we had already done, but let's look at that scenario. Let's put it in our T accounts. We start out with a bond issued $400,000, or at least a face value of $100,000, so bond payable, again, is a credit of $100,000. That's our face value, otherwise known as par value. But now we have a premium on bond payable, on bond issuance. We have a premium on bond issuance, and let's look at our original journal entry for, scenario, for the scenario we had credited the bond premium issued for $4,000. So that's going to be a credit of $4,000 over here. And likewise, if you need to know the book value or the carrying cost of the bond in scenario two, we look at the bond payable plus the bond premium. So the book value in this case would be $104,000. Now let's amortize this over the same amount of time, the three years. So I start out with a $4,000 premium. And we're going to divide that by three. And what does that give us? 
We start out with $4,000 and we divide by three and that gives me 1,333 and 33 cents. That's for the year, but of course there's a semi-annual, so we have to divide it by two again to get it for each payment. So I divide by two and we get, oh my, that's a very scary number. I think we may want to sell off these bonds as soon as possible. $666.67. That's quite, uh, quite an undertaking there. It's a beastly undertaking, one might say. All right, so we need to go ahead and do scenario two and show the amortization. The same date, 630. And in this case, we're going to have a, since we have this amount, this we have to amortize, we're gonna debit 666.67 and likewise, we're going to debit our premium. And that's why I like the T accounts. It makes it easy to see which way you're handling it. Bond issuance. And that's for our scary amount. And what is that going to leave us for a credit? We're going to credit the same amount. And that is actually going to be credited to interest expense. And we know that we increase interest expense with debits. So in this case, we're crediting interest expense. So we're actually reducing the company's interest expense. It's actually reducing the amount of interest expense we have throughout the year. And the reason we're doing that is because we sold these bomb bonds at a premium. The interest rate that we're actually working with is going to be somewhat lower than the actual interest rate that we're paying. So the market interest rate is saying that we are reducing our interest expense by this amount for every six months. So that's all I have for you today. That is how you journalize the amortization of the discount or premium on a bond payable. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, I would recommend that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.